rejoice and come and to rejoice and come today will be a joyful day and to rejoice and come shout out with joy to the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I with your spirit. spirit. My dear friends, as you are aware, today is the solemnity of the nativity of St. John the Baptist. And the church rejoices over this great event, this great feast. And this man, John, is equally important for the role that he played in the history of salvation as the one who prepared the way of the Messiah, a very important role. And he did it so faithfully well and God liked it. Let us prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate in these mysteries, keeping in mind that we are all weak, we are frail, we do commit sins, and we are in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us enter deep into our own selves and prepare ourselves to partake in these sacred mysteries in a worthy manner. With a contrite heart, let us all say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Heaven Virgin, all the angels, angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. so happy about this day that is as her children join in the joy of the church by singing the hymn glory to god in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king O god almighty father Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who raised up Saint John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, and hearken, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength, he says. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response. I thank you for the wonder of my being. Can you repeat? I, I thank, thank you for the, the wonder of, of my being. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. Response. I, I thank, thank you for the wonder of my being. Already you knew my soul. My body has no secret from you. When I was being fashioned in secret and molded in the depths of the earth, Response, I, I thank, thank you, you for, for the water of my dream. A reading from the Acts of the Apostle. John has <coughs> preached before the coming of Christ. Paul said, God raised up David to be the king of our ancestors, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had preached a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he, no, but after me one is coming, the sandal of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you that fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation. Word of the Lord. Thanks Praise be to God. God. Acclamation.
be called the prophet of the Most High. For you shall go before the Lord to prepare his ways. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke glory, glory to you, you o lord. lord the time came for elizabeth to be delivered and she gave birth to a son and her neighbors and kings folk heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her. And then on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they would have named him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, no, not so. He shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your kindred is called by this name. And so they made signs to his father, inquiring what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet, and he wrote, His name is John. And they all marveled. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed and he spoke blessing God and fear came on all the neighbors and all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea and all who heard them laid them up in their hearts saying what then will this child turn to be for the hand of the Lord was with him. And the child grew and became strong in spirit. And he was in the wilderness till the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear friends, I'm sure you're aware that the feast day of the saint is the day of the saint's death, a day the saint is born to eternal life. For instance, we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph Vaz, the patron of our archdiocese, on the 16th of January, which is the day of his death. Nevertheless, the church celebrates also the birth of three important persons in the history of our salvation, namely, the nativity of our Lord, Christmas, December 25th, the Nativity of Our Lady, September 8th, and the Nativity of St. John the Baptist, 24th, today of June, the feast that we are celebrating. Besides, it's another day of his death, that is on 29th of August. So, my dear friends, as you see, St. John has been put on par with Jesus and Mary. Can you imagine that? While he shares this privilege of celebrating, like them, his Feast of Nativity as well. This Feast of St. John the Baptist is a high-ranking liturgical feast, not only in the Roman Catholic Church, but also in the Anglican or the Eastern Orthodox and the Lutheran churches. So, my dear friends, we can imagine how great and noble a soul 
St. John is in the history of salvation. Further, he is considered to be the last and the most important prophet linked up to the coming Messiah standing right at the threshold of the door of salvation. He is the only prophet who is immediately connected to the Messiah who foretold about his coming and whose way he faithfully prepared. Prepared as his forerunner and as his precursor. Besides his physical ties with Jesus as his cousin brother and whose conception and his birth themselves as we saw were miraculous, he was the most proximate and the closely linked prophet during the last days prior to the coming of the Savior. So you see, such is the greatness of this man called St. John the Baptist. But I keep wondering, my dear friends, where is the greatness of this man lies really? And the answer is so obvious. Just a blink away, look at his greatness paradoxically in his life of utter humility and of course a simplicity, not a false, noisy, revolting humility, but a silent one which is edifying and which is so charming. He is a man who always hated being in the limelight and deliberately chose to fall to the background, in the back seat. He never ever tried to seek glory in his such an important mission of preparing the way of the Messiah. He said, you know what? Jesus must increase and I must decrease. What a beautiful expression. Jesus must increase and I must decrease. He said, Father, I baptize you with water. But the one who is mightier than I is coming soon. And I am not worthy even to untie the straps of his sandals. To untie the sandal was the task of a slave. But he says he is not fit even to do that. Can you imagine this? And when he saw Jesus coming to him, he, ex he exclaimed, Behold the hand of the sorry, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As if to say, Please don't come after me, I'm not the one. He is the superior one. Go after him. And then he adds, this is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was indeed before me. Again, when the Jews sent the priests and the Levites to ask him, who are you? Very humbly and modestly he said, I'm not the Messiah, I'm not the Christ. And after a long series of, I'm not this, I'm not that, he said, I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the path of the Lord. So my dear friends, this is the greatness of the man which is hidden in his deep, deep, unknown humility. And to crown it all, Jesus himself speaks about John and says, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John. So my dear friends, firstly let us learn the great virtue of humility from this simple ordinary man, Saint John the Baptist. At this point of time, it makes me think of an incident that happened in the life of uh, Abraham Lincoln. He was the 16th president of the United States of America and was elected in the year 1861. You'll perhaps remember that incident. When he's about to start his inaugural address, when he was elected the king, one among the Senate suddenly stood up and said, Sir, you should not forget that your father is a shoemaker. Do you know that? And that your father was making shoes for our family. Do you remember that? 
the whole Senate laughed at him, mocked at him. And Lincoln always with well composed disposition, he said, yes, yes, my friend, I know that my father is a cobbler, is a shoemaker. And I also know that my father made shoes for your family, not only your family, but for many other families. But one thing for sure, my father was a genius in his field. He knew what to do and there was never ever a complaint from anyone. And I'm proud of my father. And I'm proud to be his son. By the way, do you have any complaints about your shoes? Tell me because I am also in my father's trade. I have learned it for myself and I can give you a pair, a new one. Do you have any problem? And there was perfect silence in the hall. My dear friends, here is a great man who doesn't feel shy, who doesn't feel ashamed to call his father shoemaker. He's very happy about his father and his profession. Even he learned it for that matter. These are the men, the great men who always walk humbly on the face of this earth. My dear friends, coming back to the aspect of humility, who does not like to be in the limelight? Tell me, who does not like? Who does not like to be the center of attention, especially when one is an when one is an authority and able to command everyone? Who doesn't like this? Who does not like to see one's own name and photograph making headlines in the columns of the newspapers and the TV channels? Who does not like? Tell me. Who does not like when people touch to the skies one's name and fame and achievements and your glorious things become the talk of the town? Who does not like it? It feels so good, isn't it? It feels so good. You feel happy about that. And yet, my dear friends, this is not what the saint and the Lord of the saint, our Lord Jesus, are teaching us. This is not the style. The saint is teaching us a humble way, a silent way, and the way thus to witness Christ. Secondly, let us learn from this saint the last song that he sang. And this song, and this song is the song of truth. Just be before he was killed by King Herod. He was beheaded because he went up to the king and boldly said to him, See, it is not lawful that you have your brother's wife as your own. Friends, let us live, sorry, let our lives be marked by the emblem of truth and only the truth. And in the words of Jesus himself, let our language be yes, if it is yes, no. No. And anything more than this comes from the evil one. Thirdly, let us learn from this austere lifestyle of the man and undo those things that do not go by his beautiful ways of life. The Bible says, John never drank. He never wore fine royal kingly garments. He never lived in a palace. He never had sumptuous meals. He never celebrated. In fact, locusts and wild honey were his food and drink. Camel hides were his clothing and wilderness was his dwelling. He was such an austere man, uncompromising about and with himself. And yet, my dear friends, listen to this. In the name of the saint and on his feast day, so much contrary to his lifestyle is going on right below our nose. Isn't this true? Isn't this true? He never danced to the beat of the world. In fact, he was detached from the world. His song was always his radical holiness and a song of simplicity. And yet, again I say, on his feast day and in his name, massive big shows, dances, Parties, get-togethers, and the like are held rampantly all over, which certainly accompany all types of vice and evil. While this 
God saint is marked for his holiness. His feast is portrayed to the world as a purely worldly entity and is commercialized to, the, to turn it into a money-making platform under the banner of Saint Juan. Sadly, sadly, this is what's going on. This saint, my dear friends, was never drunk. In his name, people are overdosed with alcohol and dead bodies are found floating in the waters of the wells, ponds, springs, rivulets, as they leaped into those. As they leaped there for fun and frolic, carried away by the alluring dance and music. Thus, my dear friends, we lose on this day especially our beloved ones to the watery grave in the name of the saints. In the name of the saints. What an irony of life. Our traditional Congress song says, Chalre, Pierre, Tuilo Gary. This song seems to have been misunderstood. But in any case, the song goes on and on. And then, my dear friends, lost in the pomp and the noise of the celebration, no one is mindful of what and the way one dresses up, of the filthy language and the songs, and the inordinate behavior, and of, and of what one does, and so forth. And then I wonder, my dear friends, I really wonder whether the saint is really honored on his holy feast day and whether he is pleased with us in all our doings. Finally, my dear friends, Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, was rendered speechless until the birth of his son, John, because he did not believe in the promises of God that they will have a child in their old age. But, but only when he believed and said, this child will be named John, he regained his speech. That was the beautiful thing God could do. So my dear friends, may this feast of St. John the Baptist be an occasion for us to deepen our faith in God and to learn from this beautiful exemplary man, St. John the Baptist, the virtues of especially humility, the virtue of truth, and austerity. May this be so in our lives as we continue the Eucharist. Amen. Shall we rise, please, and profess our faith together? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the, On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly place before the Lord a few of our petitions, a few of our desires of our heart. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer, that the church and its leaders especially Pope Francis and bishops, may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the message of salvation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. That the leaders of the nations may be instruments of truth and justice and lead their people in the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the poor, the suffering, and especially the sick due to COVID-19 may see hope in the promises of Christ and that we all may be freed from the troubles of this sickness 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we may come to that end to which our faith looks, the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we who are partaking in this Eucharistic celebration may be blessed in abundance and that we may leave the values which John the Baptist lived in his life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for inspiring this few beautiful prayers to us. Be gracious to us and let our prayers rise to you and rise before you like incense. May you be pleased and may all our heart's desires be granted. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 and sisters that this sacrifice of yours and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church we place these offerings on your altar O Lord to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord in his precursor saint john the baptist we praise your great glory for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women his birth brought great rejoicing even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation he alone of all the prophets pointed out the lamp of redemption and to make holy the flowing waters he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his own blood and so with the choirs of angels and archangels the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord of power and might, earth and heaven sing Hosanna in your praise. He is blessed who comes in the name of the Lord, sing Hosanna praise the Lord you are indeed holy O Lord the fount of all 
holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Savor, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your, your cross and, and resurrection, resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Philip Neri our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saint John the Baptist, with his blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him. O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, let us all put our hands together in loving adoration in the words our Savior taught us together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive, forgive us our, us our trespasses, trespasses as we as forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. Lead us and not into temptation, but, but deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our, on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy Lord, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. has a table spread where the saints of God are fair He invites His chosen people come and die With His mother He doth fair and supply our every need Oh, be sweet to serve with Jesus all the time Come and die, the Master calleth, come and die you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry call it now, come and die. Let us now make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the marvelous prayer of St. John the Baptist accompany us who have eaten our fill at this sacrificial feast, O Lord. And since St. John proclaimed your Son to be the Lamb who would take away our sins, may he implore now for us your favor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 My dear friends, I wish you a very happy and a blessed feast of Saint John the Baptist, his nativity. May God bless you and protect you always from all kinds of dangers and sicknesses. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks Thank be to God. God.
give thanks to the Lord for His good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good. Yes, eternal is His love. I will sing to my Lord, never ceasing. All my life I will tell of His wonders. He's the maker of all earth and heaven. Of the ocean, the sea, that all behold. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good. Oh, give thanks to the Yes, it's time. This is love.